if you're ever wondering why I have such a laissez-faire chill attitude about all of this, it's because if you start your morning every day by molesting your toes into these little nubs, um, everything else seems like it's not that big of a deal. I'm just joking, toe socks are fine. If you ever talk to someone who swears by toe socks, they won't shut the f And it's the same with barefoot shoes. I think they're all good, uh, don't get me wrong, and there's something for everyone, I'm sure. But uh, you're not gonna die if you don't. It feels weird, but it does feel pretty comfortable, honestly, to run. I thought I watched this, I swear, I am certainly not. You're in my shoe closet right now, and I'm trying to pick. I'm not gonna show you this shoe closet because it's embarrassing. But I think because we wore the toe socks today, we also got to wear the bricks. <laughs> they are so comfy. Okay. We're gonna guess the song. New York City. It's unfortunately fucking magnificent out here right now. Oh, a free body disposal barrel. This shit is always so jumpable. <laughs> It's a holiday Monday, family day weekend, and so it's dead out here. I love me a nice quiet run, but I think one of the advantages of running out in the world, outside, even in the winter, is you have a little look-see into what the community's up to. And right now, they're sleeping and not picking up their dog shit, so. I'm at a crossroads, but I'm actually not. I'm just conflicted. Because on one hand, I'm a big fan of ungulate art. On another hand, that's an architectural disaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel a lot better. I don't regret it in the slightest. It's 8.36 on Wednesday. I don't know about you, but my main way to make coffee is AeroPress. And I drink a lot of yerba mate. Usually, drink it out of the gourd with the little straw. That's a pretty good way to do it. But it's a bit of a mess and it's less portable. For me, at least. I have been making my yerba mate in the AeroPress. Do not tell my bubba. This could potentially work though with any loose leaf tea. First thing I'm gonna do is heat up this plunger. You might not have to do this, but mine's old and has made literally thousands of coffees. I think I've replaced the rubber stop though like one time. All right, I've got a reusable stainless like mesh filter and then I have the paper one on top of it. I, you can reuse the paper ones a couple times, especially if it's for the same thing like tea, so I'm doing that today. The reason I double up is because it helps with the really fine dust that you get in mate. There was one time I was at work and I brought my AeroPress because I'm a bit of an asshole, and I was making coffee, and then I flipped it over, and I went to plunge it down, and there was a gap in the seal. This is right before I bought a new rubber piece, and uh, it, it just exploded everywhere, all over me, all over the kitchen, um, and then I had to do the rest of that day at work just covered in coffee. That's a mistake we learned from together. No real measurements here. I'll measure really specifically for coffee, but for this, I just go what feels right. My water here, 85 degrees Celsius. We don't wanna go much harder than that because it can burn the tea. And the cool thing about yerba mate is you can steep it multiple times. So if you wanna steep it once again at like 87 degrees, 88 degrees, it's uh, possible and will taste great and actually releases a little more of the vitamins and minerals and stuff as it's steeped. So if you're interested in getting your magnesium, this has got it. And if you want to get the most out of it, I suggest steeping a couple times. Usually when you drink it in the gourd, you're steeping it over and over and over until it's essentially flavorless and you're ready to switch it out. I did a bit of a crazy running workout yesterday. It was mild repeats followed by some 400s. Great workout, but a little bit hard to film. So today we are going to go watch my friend Aiden do a bunch of 400s and cheer him on and give them unwarranted, unprompted, and unnecessary tips on how to run faster. <laughs> Back to the tea. I'm steeping the shit for probably like four to five minutes. You thought you were gonna go a fucking day without seeing the honey tub? Hefty teaspoon. I'm gonna flip that back up, give it a spin, and press it down. Now this is gonna be super concentrated, so we wanna add a little bit of water just to dilute it a little bit. And there we go, that's how I steep yerba mate. Uh, not the traditional way, but a way that I've found tastes actually quite good. 
Mulch. Finally, after many weeks of not running as much as I should have, broke 40 kilometers. But it's Monday now, and it all starts over again. That feels okay. Uh. I might leave that whole clip in just so you get to see what someone else gets to see out their window. Now this is something I can get behind. Oh. Oh. Oh, 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 11.9 kilometers down. I feel dehydrated, but otherwise it was calm. It was cool. It felt good. I'm sure it's pretty much perfect still. The Sunday long run is good, but I think getting a chunk out of the way on Monday helps me more. It's 5.38 in the morning. I have a big workout at six. I already had some water and uh, banana. Limber up a little. And then, uh... Oh, okay, we're about to start. It's certainly 6 a.m. That one was tough. Hear that? That's the sound of me getting my cheeks clapped by that workout. Now, I gotta come clean with you. I love to run, but the real joy for me... <laughs> the most joy for me comes from stuff like this. I run for a lot of reasons, and there are a lot of reasons to run, but maybe my main one is so that I can wander around out here without getting tired for days on end. You and I both know that in real life, it isn't that practical to do this every day, but it's pretty quick and easy to just put on your running shoes and go check it out out there. You might be seeing a lot of the same things, but maybe on a different scale, or maybe with a different feeling attached. This video is a pretty good reflection of how it's actually split. We don't get to be on the glamorous adventures all that often, and I'm no different. There is something about sitting on a rock in the sun, looking through your binoculars, not making a sound for as long as you want or until the sun leaves. There's nothing I have to see and probably nothing that I will see. It was a little bit solemn in this burn and a weird feeling, it smelled like charcoal and all the dirt was so loose and getting eroded really quickly. Despite the impacts though, there was a weird feeling that it's probably gonna come back eventually, right? And we see it here. Thanks for watching. Love you. Bye. Be better than me if you're glory.